electrical engineer who's also a Peking Opera performer and the director for the New York Chinese Opera Society's youth troupe. I mean, tell me one word that best describes your journey. Balance. You know, my life is like keep balancing. Uh, I have career, I have a major. My major in college is physics and my career here is electrical engineer. But my, the other end of my life is Peking Opera, all the Chinese traditional culture. So I need to balance that in my life. For almost four years, Bin Ma has been one of the people in charge of the New York Chinese Opera Society's Youth Troupe, a group that aims to popularize Chinese opera by hosting performances, seminars, workshops, and a range of events in and around the city. Bin Ma has been a Peking opera enthusiast his whole life and has been a part of academic organizations focused on that since high school, despite becoming an electrical engineer. He got on board initially with the New York Chinese Opera Society to work on subtitles, but went on to help founding their youth troupe, a group he directs now. The youth generation is mm -hmm. our future. You know, the, um, not only in New York Chinese Opera Society, also in China, because of the history, the generation of the fans of Peking Opera is actually, you know, kind of divided. Uh, more, the, more of the fans uh, are either elder people or younger people. The age, the generation our, of our parents, mm -hmm. that generation has uh, fewer words. Tell me a little bit about what, you know, the different things that you've done because you started doing subtitles and reviewing subtitles and now you, you're the director here. Yeah, so. first the, uh, <laughs> during the period I deal with the subtitle, they find that uh, I'm actually kind of the expert <laughs> of mm -hmm. uh, this thing. So, uh, m uh, Mr. Chichu and m Mr. Daniel Yu, they talked with me more. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told them that I have a group of friends. Uh, they are young people, they're fascinated by the Chinese opera. Yeah. They kind of l learned something, uh, picking opera in China. So they're, they were very happy to, to hear that. They, uh, Mr. Chi said, why, why don't we just uh, have to use, use troop for mm -hmm. you guys? I said, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, you, even, you know, if we don't have this opportunity, uh, we, you know, at that time we have six people, and we sometimes gather t together to talk about this a little bit and sing a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, we just uh, play the music on the computer and sing at our apartment. That's really a s small group. But, uh, but w when we were supported by this well-known organization, New York Chinese Opera Society, mm -hmm. we can do much more. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So how was the beginning? How was the process of actually, you know, getting to where you are, like of getting that group together and launching the youth troop? When I was in China, I was the uh, director or president of yeah. the uh, Peking Opera Club in Nankai University. Mm -hmm. uh, and before that, I was in Nankai High School. Uh, at that time, I I start I I started to learn uh, pink opera and uh, went to the stage. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I was in high school and in university, I you know I would love to uh, make more friends of of especially young people mm -hmm. who like this pink opera thing. So especially in the college period, I. Uh, chat a lot on, on the internet, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to, to make friends uh, who, who loves picking opera. So I have a lot of friends uh, uh -huh. online uh, from uh, all the, uh, most of the, of the cities in, in China, like wow. Beijing, Shanghai, Nanjing, uh, Guangzhou, Chongqing, Chengdu, everywhere. Mm -hmm. I, I have friends who love picking opera everywhere. Uh, even most of them I haven't met before. <laughs> yeah. So you brought I these connections in that you previously had anyway, so you already had that Yeah, advantage. so, so uh, I just uh, got to New York. I've already known almost uh, all the pink opera lovers in New York City. <laughs> 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 so uh, that's how I started to to uh, to gather this group, mm -hmm. and and then m when Mr. Chichu offered this opportunity to yeah. uh, found this group, mm -hmm. I just uh, gathered them together, and uh, we had a gathering here that was uh, February the 16, 2012. 
I still remember the day. Oh wow! Yeah, that's our first gathering. It's uh, been a while, huh? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's three and a half year, more than three and a half year. Tell me a little bit about what you guys do exactly, how often you meet, and some of the past events that you've had. Sure. Every week we have uh, an activity here uh, in this office. Okay. Uh, we actually we have two part. Uh, this part is the on this table is the calligraphy class. Mm -hmm. A lot of people learn the uh -huh. Chinese calligraphy. So our youth group not only do the opera thing, we also do the other mm. traditional culture stuff. Interesting. Calligraphy class is one part. The other part yeah. is the uh, our picking opera. Uh, we have a training class. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we will invite some artists to, to, to train us. That's the training class. Oh, cool. Sometimes we have rehearsal. Uh, sometimes we have the singing class, mm -hmm. practice to sing. Yeah. Sometimes we have the kind of the dancing class, we train our body. Yeah, in pick up nice. style. Yeah. Wow. So the calligraphy, like you were telling me about, the you know people get to learn other different aspects of tradition, yeah. like in traditional culture. Yeah. How do you think that assists people to actually perform and get into Chinese opera? Almost uh, all the uh, aspects of the Chinese traditional culture are kind of connected. Mm. Uh, it's a little bit hard to explain. It's like Taoism. Taoism is, is like you, you, can, you cannot see it and touch it, but you mm -hmm. can feel it. If you Everything is intertwined. If you use it in your heart. And uh, more practi practically speaking, is when you uh, really learn that, uh, for example, just comparing with the calligraphy and the pink hopper. Mm -hmm. uh, how you hold the, the pen, and when you do just uh, one line, and uh, when you just uh, sing one tune, the, uh, the feeling you have mm. from your top to your bottom, uh, your, your breath, your heart, you can feel how you concentrate on that. That's actually the uh, same training. So it's a sort of rhythm that can be applied to a different type of art form as well. Exactly. Cool. That's also you can you can call it Tai Chi or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They they all connect it. Growing up in Tianjin, a city well known and respected as one of the home bases of Chinese opera. Bin Ma was surrounded by traditional culture and music, which influenced him not only to become a fan of all forms of traditional art and activities, but also to aim to develop and refine his own talents. Tianjin is a city like you just uh, walk on the street mm -hmm. and uh, at the corner of the street there is a park. You can hear the sound of the Jinghu, of the oh, wow. pink opera. You can hear it. And if you can sing, you just go there. <laughs> I want to sing the piece. Then you just leave. That's like the lifestyle. It's so oh, cool. Wow. I think it's so cool. Yeah. Uh, yes, sometimes, you know, uh, in the evening of the summer, mm -hmm. it's a little bit cooler after the sunset. Yeah. yeah a lot of people just uh, uh, have dinner and drink some beer. Mm -hmm. They get together in the park and uh, they sing together. Oh, wow. And the people can, you know, uh, they can not only sing, but also participate in the band of the percussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is really a lot of fun. That sounds amazing. Sounds very bohemian and very much like a street performance type of thing. You know, like you just yeah don't plan and yeah do that. That's um, that's just uh, you know in the park, but uh -huh. also they have a lot of famous, well organized mm -hmm. uh, pick hopper clubs. They uh, hold performances, you know, maybe monthly or mm -hmm. or w even weekly. So growing up around that, it was basically yeah you everywhere, right? Yeah, everywhere. So um, I also heard that people who are from there, they are either really into cross talk and Chinese opera, uh. or <laughs> they're really good at it. You know, what what. How, like, what did that do for your relationship? How much, to, your relationship to music, how much do you think that that, you know, shaped your relationship to music? Do you think that being from there alone already helped you? Mm, uh, Give you like a push? 
that's kind of a little bit two kind of story. One yeah. is the music. Uh -huh. One is of the you know talking about the yeah. crosstalk, uh -huh. the xiangsheng, yeah. the crosstalk. Yeah, it's you know every child growing up in Tianjin, they all listen to the to oh, the xiangsheng. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even uh, either in the radio or in the theater. Mm -hmm. uh, they have listened a lot, and uh, a lot of uh, traditional cross talk. They are talking about uh, the old-fashioned life, and uh, they are also hilarious. So from the hilarious pieces, you get to know the old-fashioned life. So you are interested in that. So mm -hmm. you want to learn something about that. And uh, since I'm also a big fan of the Three Kingdoms, the the, yeah, the romance, romance of, the of Three Kingdoms. Three kingdoms. So, and the Xiangsheng also have something about the Pink Opera mm -hmm. and the Three Kingdoms and the Pink Opera. The three things combined together. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's how I started to uh, get to know the Pink Opera. So you know anything can can absorb you to that, mm -hmm. either the story or the music. Tell me a little bit about the, some of the events, like uh, one of your mo like your most recent events. Every year we have a winter festival. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the biggest uh, performance we have uh, every year. Okay. We just had this. Oh, cool. Yeah, the phoenix returns to its nest. It's a comedy, actually. Nice. It's really funny. It's a big performance. We invited an artist from China. Mm -hmm. uh, she's young and she's uh, she's actually well known. She is the uh, third generation of the May School, the, of the s third generation of Mei Lafang, Mei Lafang oh, School. Oh, nice. Yeah. So she she is Mei Lafang's son's student. Mm -hmm. And she's doing a fascinating project with uh, Tan Dun in Link Center, mm -hmm. and uh, this time we invited her to be our main character for the, for this. The Phoenix of uh, Returns to Its Nest mm -hmm. is a, a traditional May school comedy. Cool, uh, it's really nice. Bima I started learning Peking Opera about 15 years ago while in middle school, and also got to be mentored by a few well-known Peking Opera masters. But since his parents weren't all that interested in music, he had to find his own ways to learn how to perform. Start that is uh, pretty hard because yeah. my family they are not interested to that. So at that time, I just uh, go to just uh, went to the bookstore mm -hmm. to buy some cassette. I think the younger generation <laughs> don't even know what's cassette. Know. <laughs> so yeah, I I bought a lot of cassettes at that time. Yeah. Uh, after after I can afford a CD, mm -hmm. I already had MP3. <laughs> 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 so so I never listened to a lot of uh, pick up CDs uh -huh. from cassette. I just uh, jumped to to the MP3. So uh, okay. in the 2000, uh, 2000, I was in middle school, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I just uh, listened to the cassette and uh, tried to sing. Uh -huh. After three years later, I went to high school. At that time, I, I met my teacher. And w we started to, you know, perform. We had a pick opera club in Nankai High School. Uh -huh. And Nankai High School is is fabulous. Nankai High School is uh, was founded from the 1904. Yeah, it's a really old school. Very traditional. Yeah, you know, you know, Zhou Enlai. Zhou Enlai was graduated from that. Uh, oh wow, yeah. that is so cool. Yeah. So basically, you have started to be exposed to that, you know as a child in mm -hmm. middle school and mm -hmm. it's something that you've been doing till now basically so what yeah i never stop <laughs> yeah what's the most fascinating part to you like why what about it fascinates you so much it's i feel like the, it's my life it's my lifestyle i i cannot imagine my my life without pink opera without xiangsheng it's it's like uh, you live without music and fun the the music uh, is always there. When I, uh, for example, when when I just uh, sit on subway, if I don't look at the Kindle or, or play with yeah. my cell phone there, I just sit there. I can I can hear it. The music is just there. Uh, and uh, when I talk to my friends, the the Xiangsheng style is just uh, coming out unconsciously. <laughs> I just cannot hold it. <laughs> I just cannot uh, hold to to make fun. All of us. <laughs> <laughs>
莫良，真义理高情在彰，赛我那。在朝阳，可真是玉楼主红朝飞翠，金殿上素照远。扬，小文周邦，只能带那官家丢不带，舍不带那官家心而上，手执琴唱。Although Bima has to split his time between being a general manager for the youth troop and working full time as an electrical engineer, he is always finding ways to innovate the group's mission. For instance, he launched a podcast last August to break the misunderstanding of Chinese opera and address some of the challenges they face while trying to spread traditional music around Western audiences. You have a podcast for the youth troop as well that you have been. Using to address some of the cultural challenges that we talked about, like language and so forth. How is that working? And what were some things that you talked about in your podcast?、Uh, the podcast、uh, actually based on two of my ideas I had before. One is I want to, you know, spread some knowledge. About the Peking Opera, yeah, yeah. No matter as very deep, very hard knowledge or just a basic concept,、uh -huh. they have、uh, you know different people to need to know that.、Uh, the other is I want to, you know, we have a lot of Peking Opera artists here that、yeah. actually、uh, a lot of people don't know them. They're actually very good. If they they didn't leave China years ago. Maybe they are very famous now. Yeah, you know, the, the chi time changes, the economics、uh, develop, everything change. They can be very famous because th they are that good. So I want to record、uh, what they, you know, what they learned, what they know,、um, er or the history or the stories about them, how they learned big opera,、mm -hmm. how about th their teachers, their family. I want to record that. So one is part of the knowledge, one is part part of the stories.、Mm -hmm. So the pod podcast,、um, based on these two ideas, we develop you know several programs of that.、Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, based on knowledge is a lot of levels, a lot of、yeah. layers we we need to deal with.、Uh, that's that's really interesting because we're actually getting a lot of probably getting a lot of stories out there. You、yeah. know, of different artists. How well has that been working out? What are, what's the feedback that you've been getting? The feedback is actually good.、Yeah. Uh, a lot of artists that they are, they are actually very willing to tell about their、oh、their,、yeah? their story.、And、so、uh, after a, a few you know demo we、mm -hmm. made,、uh, several artists call, even called me to say,、uh, sh "Shall we arrange some time to tell my story?"、Uh, sure, I、uh, great. <laughs> 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 We want to do that. When Bin Mai started the youth troupe as a division of the New York Chinese Opera Society, they had only six members, and now there are more than 100 throughout the world. Besides constantly finding ways to keep things innovative, he has successfully relied on social media to spread the word, which gives him high hopes for the future of his traditions. The youth troupe has been around for almost four years now. And in the past four years, social media has changed so much, yeah, changed the way we look at so many things so much. That's true. What type of impact did that have on the organization? 
actually, uh, uh, from the start point, um, I, I just said I uh, made a lot of friends in China mm -hmm. by internet. Actually, yeah. let's rely on the social media. Without uh -huh. social media, you, you, you cannot get the first connection to the people. Yeah. But uh, with the social media, they have the, you know, pick up a group. And or when s somebody talk about the pink hopper, a lot of people just oh, well, yeah. s suddenly shown up. Great, we have a lot of people mm. who I can talk with. So I just, uh, you know, pick someone up. I'm interested <laughs> in the, to talk to them. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a very good way to find people with common interests. You know, yeah, just you, get yeah. After you see their, you know, their blogs and mm -hmm. their pictures, you can actually uh, help you a lot to, to know uh, how is these people like, then if, if uh, I should m make friends with him. Yeah. Yeah. So does the youth troop has a platform on WeChat, for instance? Like we have everything. Yeah? <laughs> we have WeChat, Facebook, Twitter, yeah. uh, Weibo, uh, 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 everything. How yeah. do you think that helps the business, though? Like actually, the it helps a lot. Yeah? Uh, first, uh, the first uh, six people. Uh, of the youth group, mm -hmm. uh, I get to know all of them based uh, on social media. <laughs> all of them, <laughs> and uh, a lot of friends came here, who they actually watched something on social media. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people we we, we don't know them. They just uh, from social media they can get to know us. Yeah, we also have a blog on YouTube. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the youth troop going in the future? the traditional culture is recovering. It's, you know, the name of a podcast of our WeChat is called Regained, C-O Regained. C-O mm -hmm. is Chinese, Chinese opera. opera. Regained is like, we had that before, the traditional culture. We never lose it, actually. Mm -hmm. It's in our heart. Yeah. Some, somebody is, is conscious with that. We know it, it's still there. We can again that somebody uh, a lot of people don't know but we can drag that out so that's mm -hmm. called re regain yes. so I think in the future uh, more and more young people uh, are interested to the Chinese culture I mean any aspects of Chinese culture not only pink hopper calligraphy or the like Gu Qin, the, the Asian musical instrument or painting, or the Taoism of tea, or anything, anything, we can drag them back. They you can have that connection. Yeah. Wow. Where do you see yourself going in the future? Do you have any future plans that we should know about? Do you envision your future here or going back to China? So tell me a little bit about your plans. Yeah, I'm, I'm a kind of, you know, following my heart, following the nature. You, c you cannot tell that the nature has to go anywhere. I, I'm not, uh, not that sure to say. Because the, the world is keep changing. I, I will do my best, just do my best, and uh, follow my heart. I will just uh, don't, w don't forget the first heart you have, the first idea you have. Just uh, follow that.